currently there is absolutely no standard for global shortcuts or global key bindings under Wayland. So a global key binding is basically where, let's have a binding in my terminal. Normally a binding would only work when I'm focused on the window. It being global though, would mean that I can use it when I'm focused on another window. So let's say I'm currently focused on my browser, for example. I have a binding in my terminal on control E. If I go and press control E when I'm focused on the browser instead, it's still going to work in the terminal. But you may have spotted that some GNOME applications or KDE applications seem to support this functionality, and they do. The problem though, is there's a different implementation for every single version of Wayland. So if you're a developer trying to support this, it's just not practical. You're effectively trying to support like three or four different operating systems. And then you have to work out if that version of Wayland even has a way to support it in the first place. Because the big problem here is the Wayland spec doesn't define any way whatsoever to work with key bindings. This isn't a bug. This isn't something they just forgot to add to the design. This is the way it was supposed to be made. Because the way that XORG handles it is basically pretty bad. I can spend two minutes and write a keylogger. All you need to do is go use Python. It has a library to grab key presses and then save them to a file. I don't have to make sure you're focused on the window. I don't have to do anything like that. And Wayland wanted to stop that. And that certainly sounds good in theory, but it completely breaks the way that people expect to work with their systems. But as of February 17th, 2022, this has started to change. There is finally a standard in the works. And the prime candidate right now for that standard is the desktop portals. So if you don't know what a desktop portal is, basically it's a tech that was created initially to work with flat packs. Flat packs exist in a sandbox. Now we can talk about how many holes are in that sandbox, but let's just assume that the sandbox works like it should. So you need some way to actually access things on your system, because let's say you have a file manager in a sandbox. If it's fully sandboxed, there's no way for it to access the rest of the files on your system. But if you give it complete access to your system, you've defeated the point of the sandbox. So the desktop portal is there to basically mediate that access and give users control over what access is actually allowed. So it'll be used for things like allowing applications to open files, to show notifications, prevent your device from going to sleep, Eventually, it was expanded to also support pipe wire capture on Wayland. This is the way that OBS manages to get access to your screens. And it seemed like the obvious location to also add hotkey mediation as well. But when the issue was first made, it wasn't exactly in the most complete of states. So this was created by Alex Pohl, otherwise known as a Pohl further in the thread. It's designed so that applications can register actions that can be triggered globally, regardless of system state like focus. Work in progress because it's untested, there's no implementation for it. <laughs> That's kind of a big one, and needs reviews. But the first guy who commented didn't really understand the point. For what it's worth, personally, I could really use a few examples here to better understand what the intention of this portal actually is. I get that it'll address the simple control C shortcut type, but it seems over spec for that simple case. So here's an actual real world use case. On OBS on Xorg, I can do something like press my numpad three button here. It switches to this loud. Numpad one switches to this, seven and nine, and then five goes back to my full face. Right now, I'm not focused on the OBS window. I'm focused on my notes right now. I can be focused on my browser. I can be focused on anything else in my system and I can still make use of those shortcuts. And it's not just for that. I can do it with things like starting and stopping recording. So I can be looking at the camera and I can just stop the recording and I don't have to like mess around trying to work out where the button is over here. It makes it really convenient to use. Or how about you have an input method editor like say FCITX. I right now can press control space and then start typing in hiragana on any window I wanna use. I don't have to be focused on some special window to run that binding or anything like that. It just works wherever I wanna use it. But they didn't wanna just remake the XORG problem. So this meant security had to be a focus of the model. 
but this led to some really bizarre initial designs. One of those being this right here. The current iteration implies that applications will need to request the same shortcuts on startup and no permissions are stored anywhere. Basically what that means is if you started an application, it had five global key bindings. You would have to rebind those every single time. And you can probably tell this gets worse and worse and worse the more bindings you have. FCITX, for example, I think has like 10 or 20 bindings you might care about. But the funny thing about that is that's the way another one of the portals already works. The capture portal. When I open OBS on Wayland, if I have multiple screen capture set up, which I commonly will, I have to go and bind those individually every time I launch. It's not a major deal, but it is kind of annoying. But there were still a lot of other things in the protocol that needed to be decided on. For example, it'd also be a good idea to allow an application to be able to request new bindings or change existing ones, thus the initial set of bindings being set up at session construction is a bit awkward. Now, making the bindings at session construction is bad enough. It would be really annoying to have to rebind everything. But imagine opening an application, all of your bindings being set, and you decide, hey, I don't like this binding. You go and change it, but you can't actually change it. You need to restart every time you want to change something. That's not a good user experience, especially if that was happening in like a game context, for example. But how about this? Another question just popped up. Should this protocol support binding the same shortcut to multiple key combinations? Basically, should it support double binding? And I say 100% yes, once again for OBS. So in OBS, it has got a separate binding for start and stop recording. So I could have the start and stop recording on separate buttons like, I don't know, W and A, whatever key binding you want to use. But I could also go and have them on the same key binding. In my case, I'm using numpad zero. And then the application handles what state it should be in when I go and press that button. I don't think the protocol should disallow this because there are some situations where it does make sense. If you don't want to use it in your own use case though, that's totally fine, but it should be an option for certain users. And by this point, the discussion has been going on for about a month or so with a lot of really healthy back and forth about how the protocol might actually work. But a couple of people were sort of jumping the gun and Alex had to mention something. There's no way for an app to register here. We have not even specified how that would work, which is kind of a big deal. We partially know how the protocol might work, but no way for an app to interact with it. But there were some initial ideas. It could be nice to show some UI to let the portal handle the UX for all global shortcuts. I wouldn't expect this to be how every app does it though, as I expect apps to want to show their own UI for listing these shortcuts. So in something like OBS, right now you have like an OBS list of bindings. This would be a special portal window that handles the bindings and then sends them over to OBS, which if the window is made in GTK, and the application in OBS's case he made in QT. Now you have these weird mismatch windows, which doesn't offer a great user experience. But he says this down the bottom here. I do want us to be able to offer a UX that doesn't necessarily have to show UI from the portals, as we've seen this lead to some rather awkward workflows with cross-platform apps. But if not done correctly, it could lead to a really annoying problem. For example, if you want to delete a shortcut and the app doesn't delete it, but it deletes it in the UI, you suddenly have a shortcut bound to a trigger, which you are not aware of. Let's say, for example, with my numpad zero for start recording. If I delete that in the OBS UI, but then OBS doesn't send that along to the portal, now in OBS it says it isn't bound, but according to the portal it still is. So now you have this key binding being listened to for seemingly no reason. But that's probably more of an application problem than a problem with the protocol. If an app isn't properly using the protocol, there's not really much the protocol can do to make sure it's holding the app in check. At least in a generic way. But something else was missing. A standard way to convert a key press into a human readable format. Now, for keys like the A key and the B key and the general alphanumeric keys, this is 
pretty easy. But if I press the enter key, how should that be displayed to the user? And if an app wants to go and provide default key bindings to the portal, what's the format that it should be working in? Should it be in angle brackets? Should it be the name in lowercase? Should it be in uppercase? Should it be key sims? What should it be using? Honestly, I don't care what the standard is. I don't really care if there's even a standard for the human readable form. But some sort of standard for the app to communicate with the portal does need to be defined. And I have no idea how we managed to get to April without this being discussed. I'm wondering if a bound input would generate both an input event for the focused window. So if I press the A key in a text editor, it will go and send the A key to the application. And also a dbus activation signal for the unfocused application that requested the global key binding. So this would be your global shortcut. If I go and press a key on my keyboard, should it activate the focused application and the global shortcut at the same time? Or should the global shortcut just eat the binding? Now, as a default, I would say just do both. Like with the double binding, allow it to happen. And if users don't want to use it, then they will not use it. But there may be a middle ground worth looking into. When the user registers a binding, let them decide what they want to do. Let them decide to make it an exclusive binding. So that would be when the hotkey is pressed, it is then eaten by the protocol or a non-exclusive binding. And then it's just sent everywhere that wants it. And this message here was sent four days ago because this isn't done yet. This is still a draft. It is a work in progress and nothing has really been finalized. But this is something that is going to happen Finally, Wayland is going to get to the point where I can actually daily drive it. Not having OBS work properly was basically the main thing stopping me from actually using it all the time. When that's there, this will just become a Wayland channel, probably. I'll leave the full thread in the description down below. It is a great read. And you know what? If I'm going to cover some of these random GitHub threads, I've got to do some positive ones every so often. And this one certainly is that. They are trying to fix the problem. Everybody's being professional about it. Everyone's got some really good ideas and pointing out problems with the protocol, and it's making a lot of progress. So hopefully sometime in the future, this will finally be here. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stanley Barrow, pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.